Today's video it's time for something a little bit different. It's something to take a look at my tech museum. What I have here is a device that I got from my uncle in around 2004. And it is an old IBM QuietWriter 76-3. And this is not just a typewriter. This is an electronic typewriter and printer. And it uses a very special printing technology. Well, what can you do with this? At first it's just a typewriter. But you can also erase the text. That's because it uses a thermal printing technology and it smells a bit like um, a photocopier because it uses a sort of toner. Um, and because of this, because the toner is fused on the paper, it can also be unfused and erased. Um, but that only works in typewriter mode. In printer mode it actually bonds the toner a bit tighter to the paper and you cannot erase that. So, um, in order to use it as a printer you have to disable the keyboard, but it's done by these buttons. Uh, there's a really big button here, that is the code button, and you can use this button to um, access various um, functions of this printer. It even has some sort of spell, uh, spelling correct feature. Um, it has a lot of features for forms and a lot of miscellaneous stuff that I don't know how to use because I don't have the manual, but I only know how to use the printer. And it has these neat, and it also has these nice uh, buttons over here that you can use for the paper feed. Uh, the keyboard in this thing is very nice. It is basically the same as a Model M. Yeah, it's, it has the same great buckling spring technology when you type it. Yes, it's very nice and clicky and very satisfying. It really has that oomph, that IBM Model M quality to it. It's just a marvelous piece of technology and well, it came out in around 1984-85 when people were still a bit unsure about whether they wanted a computer or a typewriter and with this device they could have both. They could start with a typewriter and then get a computer and use it as a printer. Isn't it marvelous? So, let's dive a little bit into how this thing types. So, um, I've already uh, typed a few things here and of course the text is not correct so if I move the GoPro I will move the GoPro a bit closer to the uh, uh, paper and I'll use this button over here. This is the erase button and look what happens. It strikes over each character twice and this is how I can erase text. Yeah, the erasing is not particularly fast. It's rather slow. But I'm almost there. I've almost erased my line. Almost there. Now that I have erased my line, let's take a look. Um, for instance, this printer also supports multiple fonts. Um, you can actually install font packs. And I have to look closely where they are, but I used to have another spare one. Um, let's see. There's some kind of door in the printer where you can install the fonts. Now check this, this is the font packs. We have Courier 12, Italic A and Prestige Elite. And Prestige Elite is the default font that I have um, installed when it boots up. And this is the uh, print cartridge. I have many replacements for those. And here is some uh, other information. Sadly it doesn't say when this thing was uh, purchased. But suppose I want to switch to a different font, well, I can do this. I just hit this button, code, and now if I type, it should be in a different font. You see, you can have two different fonts installed, and I think that's really neat. So you could purchase various font packs, 
just to suit your style. I mean, that's just great. It's, well, attention to detail, even though it's not a bitmap thing. I actually don't know how it stores the front information. I presume there's a really small ROM inside them with some uh, character data. But yeah, this thing gives you options. Um, you could also do things like forms, um, various lists. You can also disable the beeping noise. Um, this says Wissen, which is erasing. Uh, Toevoegen means adding. Uh, spelling, I think this is spelling check. And well, this code button again is used with these functions over here. Um, let's try this function. I don't know what it does. Maybe it underlines the text. Yes, it creates underlined text. And now let's try this. Oh hey, that's interesting. It does some kind of uh, uh, upper script or superscript. Now let's we'll try this one. And yeah, it's able to put that character lower. And of course we have various miscellaneous symbols here like uh, one and a half. Um, and if I do shift we get one and a third. But I want to disable that underlined thing now. Um, of course we have um, currency symbols like a florin. It's a very old uh, currency symbol from the days before the euro. That is actually the, uh, the florin symbol that was used for the Dutch uh, guilder. Of course since the euro uh, the florin uh, symbol has become obsolete. This thing has a lot of different functions and well I got this uh, thing from my uncle who has got it from an old school here that he used to work at. He, it came from a school in Amersfoort where he worked and uh, he had this thing uh, a couple of years in his home uh, after his retirement and it kind of stood in the way and he gave it to me. It's just a fascinating piece of technology and it has all these things here. Uh, I think this has something to do with the arrays. I think this uh, means that it goes twice and that one does once. Let's see that in action. If I now do this, it will probably erase twice. Yes, and now I do this one. So it's set to one time. Hey, that's weird. It doesn't seem to make any difference. But um, yeah, I wonder what this button does. Hmm, let's try this code. Oh, it actually prints some kind of number. Um, what does this do? Oh, hey, it blocks something. Um, what's this? I don't know. And then there's all these miscellaneous buttons over here. I have no idea what they do. Or how to use them. Uh, I wonder what this does. No, nothing particular. Uh, what could this be? I don't know, I don't have the manual, but still it's fascinating. Yeah, um, it just has so many miscellaneous features and you really have to have the manual to use this. And it took me a while to figure out how to make this thing print. It turns out it's just really simple. You just have to use the code button and print. And you have to use this every time you want to print. Yeah, that's a bit annoying unfortunately. Right, now I'm going to demonstrate how you can add this as a printer in Windows. Um, I'm using Windows XP here on an old Pentium 4 computer from 2002. It's actually an old Aldi PC, uh, medium branded. And um, well, you can pretty much still use this if you have a uh, computer with a parallel port and the printer is uh, treated as a generic text printer. That's very important. It has to be a generic printer because it can only handle text. And of course a parallel port is mandatory as it uses a Centronics interface. And that's really the only requirement. Uh, other than that is actually quite simple. You just add a generic text printer in Windows and Bob's your uncle. Uh, of course you could also use this with uh, Windows 95, 98 and of course DOS. Uh, I presume many people used it with WordPerfect. But it's not limited to PCs. Um, 
I remember that a few years ago my dad uh, actually hooked it up to a BBC Micro computer using uh, a Centronics interface cable and it's even possible to hook it up to a microcontroller because the uh, Centronics interface is uh, quite simple. So yeah, it's uh, quite interesting for tinkerers. Uh, yeah, did want to print text with a microcontroller? If you want to do a, a simple microcontroller printing project, then uh, yeah, this could perhaps be a good uh, starting point. And uh, well, and the final thing that uh, is left is uh, just a creation of a test page. You just uh, print the test page, and you'll see that the uh, uh, printing speed is actually really quite slow. It takes about one and a half minutes. And um, well, the waiting is uh, worth it because the print quality is really quite good. You'd be amazed how nice and how sharp the fonts are because well, they are thermally printed and they use a uh, sort of toner-like technology. And generally, the typefaces are really nice. Uh, if you had a dot matrix printer at the time and you compare it against the print quality of the IBM QuietWriter, you'd be amazed how good the print quality is. So let's take a look at that. So here's a look at the print quality. As you can see the uh, quality of the typeface is really nice. It's uh, very similar to that classic uh, Courier font in Windows. And yeah, this is just typed with thermal printing. And yeah, the typefaces are really nice and uh, also just in general the print quality of the technology is quite good. Let's take a look at the font pack. For that I have to open up the hood here. So, open her up. You see there's some uh, information, not much there. And there's some info over here. Some adjustments you can make. I mean, yeah, this is a typical IBM product. Lots of attention to detail. There's even a sort of sticker in there, although it's a bit dark. So that's our print head. Oh yeah, and you've got these flashy LEDs over here. Oh, it probably warns me that there's no paper. And here's the typeface. Let's turn it off first. So, here's the power switch. It's just one of those classic uh, big IBM switches that you got with those uh, original uh, PCs. Well, so here's the uh, font packs. In order to remove it, you just have to push it like that. You can take it out. Quiet electronic font. Prestige Elite A. This is the back. It says copyright IBM 1983. And it's uh, well covered by all various US patterns. Yeah, these things were released in 1983, so maybe they were used with other models, perhaps with certain IBM printers, I'm not sure. 
Uh, I could not find much conclusive information on this uh, product, but from what I've gathered on the internet, this particular printer may have been released in 84 or 85. And there are the terminals for the font, and you see it's just only 5 pins. So I think there's probably some really simple ROM in them. And this is the uh, italic courier font. Oh, that's something I actually haven't demonstrated. I believe there's even a way to print uh, text in italics. If you just uh, kind of glance over here. But I'm not really sure I forgot about it. So, there you go. That was a look at one of my museum pieces, the IBM QuietWriter 7650-3. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.